Welcome to Train Signal. You are watching Monitoring and Troubleshooting Host and VM Performance. So let's talk a little bit about tools for performance monitoring. This is a fairly simple lesson, uh, mainly because we've already talked about ESX Top in the past, but I just want to give you some specific counters to look at and things like that. So we'll start with ESX Top, or ESX Top, the remote version like we've talked about, and then we'll look at vCenter performance charts, which a lot of people are already familiar with. Uh, if you've been doing any vSphere administration, you're probably pretty familiar with those, but we'll hit on the advanced features of that. They do sometimes show similar information, uh, sometimes in a different format. So whereas one may show a percentage, vCenter will often show a total count. Like sometimes on errors, ESX Top will say, here's a, you know, an error percentage for network you know, transmits. Whereas vCenter will say, well, here's a running count of errors in frames. It's just something to keep in mind when you look at these. Sometimes you can't really do a direct comparison of the numbers. We already hit on ESX Top earlier in the course, but it's kind of important to understand. So ESX Top is a tool, and it's similar to Unix Top. And by similar, I mean, you know, they have the same look and feel and some of the same information. It's used to monitor performance metrics. A lot of times we'll do it in real time. So that's how we'll do it in the lab in a minute. And it's just a great way to sit there and look at something. If you're seeing a problem, you can kind of want monitor things like latency or errors or usage or utilization and see what's going on. You also have the option to run it in batch mode, save the data in CSV format, and then pull it into another tool. Uh, that's handy if you want to catch it over a length of time and then go back and review your findings. So to do that again, you'll use a delay which says how often, so like a delay of dash D5 there, we'll say every five seconds. Iterations are the number of times, so it's 5 seconds times 200, so you'll be doing this for 1,000 seconds, and then we're outputting it into that metric capture.csv file. So you can pick and choose how often you want to grab the metrics and how long you want to run it. You, of course, don't want to get too aggressive because this does put load on the system, and usually, you know, every few seconds is a great kind of a snapshot. And again, we talked about these. Some common tools are Windows Perfmon, Microsoft Excel. You can import CSV files straight in. And then the ESX Plot tool. Latest version of ESX Plot is available there. So let's take a look at a couple of common metrics. One is percent ready. This is a percent of time a VM is waiting to be scheduled. This is a common one. So for example, um, well, first of all, this is this is what happens if a VM is sitting there. It's ready to have a thread you know, executed on a processor, a physical processor, and it can't because the vSphere scheduler says, hold on, I got other stuff going on. I'll get to you in, a, in just a split second. Often we'll see this with VMs with multiple vCPUs because it's trying to schedule them as close as it can on the same CPUs that it has before for cache locality and things like that, and it's having issues scheduling it. So it's often due to the overuse of vCPUs. If you need the vCPUs, great, but if you don't, you're causing scheduling issues and you'll hit high ready time. So now to my little anecdote. I had a good friend brought me in to look at their dev test environment and they were having terrible performance. So they were running really high consolidation ratios because these servers had a terabyte of RAM each in them. There were a couple of them. And they were running about two to 300 VMs per host. Not unheard of, you know, that's a lot, but it's not unheard of. But their performance was bad. You look at the CPU use, and it wasn't terrible. These were, I think, 40 core servers, 4 by 10 cores. And so it's a lot of cores. So you're looking at it, and the CPU use isn't terrible, but their ready time was crazy. It was like 20 to 30%. So 20 to 30% of the time when a VM was ready to have a thread executed, it couldn't. So they were getting just abysmal performance. I want to see ready time under 10%. I really want to see it under 5%. But under 10 is pretty acceptable to most people. But if you want your best performance, you really want it under 5. So keep that under that. Percent CSTP. This is excessive use of virtual SMP, which is calling co-scheduling problems. It basically, it's saying, look, it's having to do switches. It's having to do multiple VCU views. It's having to do scheduling. You want to see this under 3%. Just something as kind of a, a good rule here. Then you have percent system, percent of time spent by system on behalf of the world, or you know, basically the VM, usually caused by high I.O. Basically, the system is having to do a bunch of background stuff, a bunch of interrupts, and it's taking up and chewing up a lot of time. So you want to see this under 20%. 
If this is more, again, it's usually caused by, for some reason, high I.O., and there's a lot of CPU work being done to move that data around in and out. Not a lot you can do, but at least take a look at it. Make sure you need to do that I.O. Make sure the I.O. is being done efficiently, um, with the right drivers, the right devices, the right devices for the guests, you know, good NICs and HBAs in the servers, things like that. And then the last one, percent MLMTD. vCPU was ready to run a CPU, but was artificially limited. Um, basically, you know, you've got a CPU limit. So I really want to see this at zero. Uh, I'm not a, well, I won't say I'm not a big fan of CPU limits. Just use them sparingly. And if you see this above zero, it usually means that you've got a limit that you may have forgotten about or someone else set. So take a look and, and, and dig into that. Some common memory metrics. Uh, first, memory control, SZ. Basically, the balloon driver in the VM is being used to reclaim memory. So if you see this uh, one or higher, it means ballooning is going on. Your memory is being constrained. Some ballooning is fine, but if it's a chronic issue or causing performance, it get, at least gives you a place to look and say, go look at memory. The next one, SWCUR, is host is swapping memory to disk at some point. This is kind of like a running total. Anytime a host swaps to disk, it's bad. Your performance goes through the floor. It's not as efficient as a guest swapping, like Windows swapping or Linux swapping. At least the guest knows what he's swapping. He knows its memory he's probably not going to need. When VMware does it or vSphere does it, it's just swapping, and it doesn't have that level of understanding, so it, your it, performance just goes to the floor. Then you have swap read and swap write, which means it's actively swapping to disk, either reading or writing. Again, bad, bad, bad. Cache USD says host has compressed memory at some point. I want to see this at zero. Um, if you remember, we do transparent page sharing. We do ballooning. We do compression of memory, and then we swap. So compression is that last stand before we start swapping to disk. So you really want that to be zero. Uh, zip per second is basically host is compressing memory right now and about to start swapping. So again, you want that at zero. Unzip per second is saying the host is accessing compressed memory, so it's uncompressing it. So if it's above zero, that means at some point that it compressed it, and now it's uncompressing it. So again, it's moving memory in and out. That takes CPU, and we're right on the brink of swapping to disk. And then n percent l, which is talking about um, local NUMA access. So percent of time that memory access is local. So remember NUMA. It lets us access memory directly from the CPU. If it's not local, we have to go through another CPU to get to the memory. That adds latency. At least, you know, a threshold you're looking at is 80% of the time you want this to be local. So if it's less than that, if this is 60, 50, 30, 20, it means there's some issues. You want to look at how your VMs are configured. You want to look at your memory config in the server. And you want to see if you can tweak this to make this work a little bit better. So now a little bit on vCenter performance charts. Many are already familiar with these charts, but for the exam, I want you to know how to create new default charts, configure proper metric time windows, confirm vCenter performance logging levels, basically the advanced side of the performance charts and the advanced settings, learn how to go through there. I highly suggest you spend a few minutes at some point going through host and VM performance charts, looking at the advanced, looking at the different subgroups, seeing what your options are. And the reason being is if you get a question on that, I don't want you to have to go through and start digging and remembering where these things are. I'm all about time on this exam, and I want you to kind of at least be able to quickly go to that point. So at least become familiar with it and understand what you can and can't see in those charts. So now it's time to hit the lab. We're going to do a kind of a quick lab on ESX Top. We'll look at those key performance metrics that we just talked about. And then the vCenter performance chart configuration and usage and a little bit about that. So with that, let's go ahead and let's jump to the lab. So let's go ahead and we'll start with ESX top. Jump on Optimus again. We'll expand this out. I like more room with ESX top. So by default, it is going to do the most of the CPU stuff. Let's see. So couple things we want to look at, percent ready, we can see CPU ready, and I really don't have anything too busy. I've got a bunch of, not a bunch, but probably 
15 VMs on this box, and most of the time it's the idle process, so I definitely don't have too many vCPUs trying to vie for scheduling, but, you know, there you go. There's a percent CSTP, which is your excessive use of virtual SMP. Again, that's all zeros, nice and happy. Uh, let's see, percent system here. We talked a minute ago, there it is, that I wanted to see this somewhere under 20% of time spent on services, usually high I.O. I don't have anything that high I.O. Uh, let's see, the only one that's up here is my Untangle VM, and it's at .33, and that's my network firewall, so it is doing some I.O., but obviously it's less than half of a percent, so I wouldn't really call that anything to worry about. And then let's see, anything artificially limited, MLM, here it is. I don't, I don't have any artificial CPU limits, so that's all zero. You know, my lab's fairly boring, but at least shows you where the things are at. So let's hit M and switch to memory and see what we can find. So here, let's see, memory, let's see, ballooning, control SZ. May have to do some fields there. Yep, J. Is that field? So hit enter. Control S Z is right about here. There we go. And again, zero. I don't have any memory ballooning. Not too much overcommit on memory there. Uh, let's see. Swapping S W C U R here. We have swapped some, so we can see that a little bit in the past, but nothing too much. Same here. Some swapping. Let's see. Anything currently swapping? SWR. Let's do my fields. Uh, well, I guess I've already got them. I need to do the correct order. So, for case moves it left, I'll move those over a bit. Swap, swap, swap. Memory control. There we go. Move these over a little bit. Swap read, swap write. Nothing actively swapping right now that I see. So, no problems there. Cache. Again, let's take a look at my field order. Hit O. And let's see, where's that going to be? Memory allocations, not NUMA stats. I'm going to need NUMA here in a second, so I'll go ahead and F. we got to turn that on, so we'll turn that on. And I will turn on NUMA, which was G. Let's see if those have showed up, or I need to move them again. Uh, let's see, I need to move them again. So, O for order. Memory compression. Move this way back. And zip and unzip. Let's see here. Right here, all zero, so we're not actively doing anything. Uh, cache. Oh, there it is. I was like, I knew I forgot one. Right here, a little bit of compression. Uh, possible we're seeing a little bit or have in the past for like vShield here. Um, some point I have put some of these hosts in maintenance mode and moved stuff around. So again, it's a running total, but my zip and unzip per second shows it's not doing anything right now. And then NUMA access. Uh, let's see, that's not here. So go back for O for order. NUMA is G. So let me move him to the left again. And let's see, zip, zip, zip. N percent L, nothing going on there. Uh, actually, these are single socket systems, so obviously everything is local. But uh, you would normally see that here under N and L. So hopefully that was as fascinating for you as it is to normally look through ESX top. But one thing to keep in mind, and we talked about this in the other lesson, O is your order, F is your field enable, um, as you can see, you know, I unfortunately have to do these recordings at 1024 by 768. Normally I have a much higher resolution screen so I can fit more on it. But if you're like me and shuffling, keep the O and the F commands in mind. So let me quit out of this. And now let's see. There's my pointer. And we'll go to vCenter. So we'll go to host and clusters. couple things here. First of all, administration vCenter server settings, statistics, keep in mind what your statistics settings are, what kind of information you want to retain, and make sure and make use of your database sizing tool. Normally I have three hosts, but one of them is having a boot issue. I don't have anywhere near that many, so we'll say 30. 
so at my current settings I'm at less than a gig. But you can go through and set these like the you know, five minute interval duration. So we do an interval every five minutes. You can actually set this to one minute if you want to get even more granular. How long you want to keep those for and at what level, the higher the level, the more information. So like four is all metrics. So if you're being told to do all metrics, you want to do four. Summary information or basic metrics would be one. I usually for five minutes keep a fairly good bit of stuff. And then you can pick and choose and how long you want to save these for. Again, this is kind of basic information, kind of VCP level stuff, but again, it's worth repeating. Then I want to look at performance charts. So we come to performance. A little FYI, a little troubleshooting. If you ever get to a point where, say, your historical uh, time range reports do not work, they will not load. But if you go to real time, they do. Normally that means you've got a time mismatch between your vSphere host and your vCenter server. So check your time sync and all that. So these are pretty simple. Um, you can view this. You can view virtual machines uh, on the host. You can go to different virtual machines like my domain controller. Again, performance. And it shows you what you need to know. And these are good overview charts. What I'm more worried about for the exam are things like the advanced charts. So you click advanced. And it has some pre-built stuff here. You can go over here and switch to certain types for things like disk, network, memory. And then you can click chart options. So some of the information in here will be different depending on if it's a host or a VM. So that's why I said go through here and look at this. Then you can go through and select some things. So if you want to look at a chart for memory for the past week, showing how much is granted, active, all that, you can select past week, do that, and hit OK and it will draw that out for you. So then you can do it for the past month, past year. You can do custom, which says show me the last hour, the last day, week, month, the last three months, if you have the data, things like that. Or if you have the data, you can do a specific date range right here. So if you want to see stats from a different date range. If you get something you like, for example, oh, I don't know, let's see custom on CPU. CPU usage for the last month. And you're like, this is a chart that I use fairly often. You can save it. So you can go right here and say save chart settings CPU last month. And it will save it here. You can even tell it to always load this at startup instead of the default. To get this, and we hit OK. And it'll show you that. So it shows it's custom. CPU and it gives you what you want over the last, I believe I said month, that's CPU use on this VM over the last month. If you want to delete these, like you created one and want to delete it, do manage chart settings, pick that one and hit delete. So again, come in here, get used to these things, see what you can look at, see what you can see. Also some things are different real time versus custom or past whatever. Uh, take a look at those. See what you need to do here for selection. Get used to these and save your settings and understand how to make these the default. So not a lot to know about performance charts or pulling information up, but it's important to know exactly how to get there and get there fairly quickly. So that's it for the lab. Let's go back to the slides. And that's it for the lesson. So not a real deep lesson, but it's important to understand. Um, this is, again, one of these lessons that are kind of quick hits. Make sure you understand the specified task. Make sure you need you know where to go for the information and how to get it quickly. Uh, stuff that I want you to be able to do very fast during the exam. So that's it for this one. I look forward again to seeing you on the next lesson.